I've got a real treat for you today. We're about to take a look at the most iconic and valuable baseball sets of all time. This episode is brought to you by Heritage Auctions. Whether you're a fan of baseball, basketball, football, or hockey, Heritage Auctions has something for you with an unmatched selection of sports collectibles. Bid with confidence on everything from autographed jerseys and game used equipment to trading cards and more. Don't miss a chance to own a piece of sports history and build your collection with Heritage Auctions today. Marshall, thank you for having us back out to your secure vault here again outside of Denver. We are honored to be able to show the audience something new today. We've done some great videos together, but this is the first time we're really going to dive into the greatest baseball sets ever made. And what a collection you have to share with us here today. I look forward to visiting with you and, and talking about uh, uh, my collection. Well, thank you, Marshall. And we're going to get right into it. So what we've done, there's, of course, many iconic baseball card sets. And, and you know, throughout history, all the way back from pre-war into even popular sets of more recent years. But we've pulled five sets out from your collection that I personally believe these are five of my most favorite sets of all time, five of the most impactful, certainly in the history of baseball cards. And we're gonna go right in. We're gonna start with the 1915 Cracker Jack set. This one I think is unbelievable. And of course it all starts with a famous Shoeless Joe Jackson card. Tell us about this card, Marshall, and tell us about this set. The, the cards that you're gonna look at in Cracker Jacks were in a scrapbook. You know, it had the name, and you put the Joe Jackson on the square where it said, put that card. These were in with glue on them, but the glue is so soluble that if you look at the back of the card, it You can't it really tell. Off. Yeah, it came off entirely. These the, are super the, clean. The second thing about this as well is when you see the other cards, see the color? So vibrant for cards. I mean, these are cards that are now over 100 years old. And of course, your cards are in incredible condition. I mean, you've got all PSA 8s and above, PSA 9s. But to see cards that are over 100 years old with such color and vibrancy, it's really, really special. This is how the card would look if you were in 1915 to have these cards in your possession. And of course, there's a lot of other famous players in the set too. Hannes Wagner, Christy Mathewson, Connie Mack. But you know what makes the Ty Cobb, the Hannes Wagner, the Christy Mathewson, what makes those so iconic? Well, first, the, the artwork on them. It's beautiful. The look of the card. And also, they were the legends of the time. You know, Matheson was college educated, lived in Factoryville, Pennsylvania. And then Wagner, he uh, and his brother had a barber shop at one time. See that trophy over there? Yeah. That trophy is given to Wagner. It's a Tiffany trophy of the five batting titles he won. I'm just trying to indicate there's all different stories that are so cool mm -hmm. about these players. And that's why I always urge people, there are cards in here and in these boxes that of players that you may not recognize, look them up. The stories are equally as important. Yeah. All right, Marshall, we're gonna move to 1933 Gaudi next. And this was a big set. We got four full boxes of 33 Gaudi here. Um, this is one of my favorite sets of all time, just with how unbelievable these images look. And of course, it all starts with the famous 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruths, of which there are four of them in this set. Tell me about these cards, Marshall. Well, the first thing that's kind of fun to know, see, you notice the faces yeah. are the same. You're right. A lot of people don't know that, like that face yeah. and that face. This is the only card that's... Uh, somewhat different. Why there's so many Ruth and two Garrick? Yeah, let's look at the Garrigs because... And I'll explain that. Yeah, because what's interesting about the Garrigs is there's two of them with the exact same image but different card numbers in the set. Card number 92 and card number 160. Well, what happened was Gowdy used some inferior paper. Some of it was good but they had a lot of bad paper and the, and the cards were sort of becoming compromised because the paper was so weak. Well, the kids love the Gowdy cards. You know, we're talking about gum. Gowdy Gum Company decided, well, we, we ought to make more cards. 
And that's why you see so duplicates in the Gaudi set, because they added to the set later on because they were making dough. And then the Gaudi Lajouet, that's a great story as well. There you go. Notice the Gaudi Lajouet looks like a 34 Gaudi. Mm -hmm. But it, it was meant to be in the 33 Gaudi set. Here's what the gum company did. We are, are going to leave a number out so that the kids keep collecting to find the number that's not there. Yep. Well, it got caught on. Yep. And letters were written to Gaudi, you know, they're angry about the fact they can't complete the set. So they decided in 1934, if you write in that you want the card, you will get the, the, this Lajouet card for your 33 Gaudi set, but they used the 34 background. Now, why is this card so invalu well, valuable? There's a second reason. When they sent the card back, they stapled it to a letter. So there are staple holes in a lot of the Lajouet cards because they didn't just send them clean. Hey, they weren't worth anything. So why, where did these come from? In the early 90s, there were some ladies whose husbands worked at the Gowdy Gum Company, and they, apparently their husband took home some of these Gowdy cards without the staple holes in them. This must have been quite the adventure, putting all of this together. When you finally completed it, how many years did it take? And when you finally completed it, did you go out for drinks to celebrate that night? I thought about it, <laughs> but probably four or five years, uh, because you've got to remember when I started collecting, I would say the commons when I started collecting were like 600 bucks ungraded. Now, Marshall, let's move to one of the sets that I know is one of your personal favorites, the 1941 play ball set. Tell me about this set. This is uh, the time of World War II when we declared we were gonna enter the war. I think this is a, not an understood set. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that our visit today will make people understand, you know, it's very pricey, uh, 39 play ball Williams and DiMaggio, but there are a lot of them. They're, t they're all over, they're in every auction. And I'm not trying to say they're not worth what they're worth because the market is what sets it. But boy, if you're smart, you can find these cards, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that you're, you're getting a heck of a deal. Uh, I don't think I have to sell it when you look at the difference between the two cards and they're clearly close to the rookie year. What a set. All right, next, Marshall, we're gonna go to the set that we've got featured out here in front of us right now, the 1948 Leaf set. And this set has so many iconic cards in it, including, of course, Jackie Robinson. Talk to me about this set, Marshall. We've got the three cards here of Williams, Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth Joe DiMaggio, Joe DiMaggio, Satchel Page. These cards are not Miss, they're not gonna win a, uh, uh, the most beautiful card, but they are really expensive in high grade and low grade. So what's the deal with this? A couple of reasons. This is earlier, these are like rookie cards. For the Robinson and for the Satchel Page. And secondly, the centering on these cards is just not great. Third, they're post-war cards in color. In 1948, you look at these five cards, and they're serious uh, cars because they're so early. And they're very Americana, so simple. They have, they have almost a retro look to them. It's almost yeah. if someone were today to create retro art from the 40s, this is almost what you would expect it to look like. It almost has a little bit of a pop art feel in how they've done the colorful backgrounds and you know the images of, of the players over top of those. It is pop art. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to express it. All right, Marshall, the final set we're gonna do today is, is perhaps the most iconic of all time. 1952 tops, and what a massive set this is. Eight of these boxes full of these 1952 tops cards to complete the set. Now, of course, everyone knows the Mickey Mantle, and earlier today we had the chance to really spend some time with your incredible Mickey Mantle PSA 10 card. But the 1952 top set, it's so much more than just Mickey Mantle. And as beautiful as that Mickey Mantle card is, there's many other cards from that set which are also incredibly beautiful and have some of the greatest baseball players of all time. Tell me about this set and some of these cards. It's the first color set that's from a photograph of the player. The size of the card as opposed to the Bowman is another reason. 
card 1 through 80 has both a red and black back. Why? Well, what happened was they started with a black back and it leaked through the front. It wasn't a good idea. So that's why you see 1 through 80 is black and then they redid it in red and did the rest of the set with a red back. And the hardest card to get right is the first and last card because of obvious reasons. When they got them, uh, they put rubber bands around them and they, they nobody really cared to, who's Andy Pafko at the time. You know, he was a above average player. These two cards, if you can find them in eights, let alone in nine, it's, that's what makes the set hard to complete for a set collector in high grade. The, the good news is there are a lot of them, a lot of 52 Topps cards. If you're not looking for high grade, but nice looking cards, there are plenty of them. And some, even some of the eights are under $500 because they're just not named players. But then when you get into this area here, that's in the mantle, in the maze. I mean, this maze is in a nine. I mean, that, that's impossible. Yeah. Overall, what do I think of this set? It's the big daddy. Mm -hmm. the in my opinion, the 33 Gaudi and the uh, 52 Tops. Uh, if you can have those sets in whatever grade you want, get them. This is amazing, and what a set 52 Tops was. I mean, so <coughs> many iconic players. Obviously, not just Mantle, but Robinson and Mays, and so many other Hall of Famers, and and just great players Look in such that. a beautiful card set. Marshall, this has been wonderful. Thank you for taking us on this tour through five of the most iconic sports card sets of all time. I know you own so many others, but we're going to save the others for another video someday in the future. Hopefully all of you enjoyed watching this video. I will mention that so many of these sets and so many more are available in the Sports Card Investor app for free for you to browse. So if you're curious to see all the 52 Tops cards, for example, just download the free Sports Card Investor app and you can search for 1952 tops and flip through and see what all those cards are selling for if you do want to start your own collection of this type. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit that like button and we'll see you soon with the next one. Take care. This episode is brought to you by Heritage Auctions. Whether you're a fan of baseball, basketball, football, or hockey, Heritage Auctions has something for you with an unmatched selection of sports collectibles. Bid with confidence on everything from autographed jerseys and game used equipment to trading cards and more. Don't miss a chance to own a piece of sports history and build your collection with Heritage Auctions today.